even from tonight, rise up. Rise up. The Lord is looking for you. Rise up. The Lord is looking for you. He wants to change your life, change your heart, change your destiny. As you rise up, tell the Lord, Lord, I want to forget the past. Lord, please forgive my past. Lord, please set me free from the past. Lord, release me from mediocrity and bring me, bring me into new life. Bring me into a new relationship with you. Tell the Lord, is the one that invited you and is calling you now so that a new change will come in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has answered your prayer. The Lord has accepted you. The past is forgiven. A new life is beginning in your life right now in Jesus' name. Heaven confirm that in your life in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, all these brothers and sisters, young people, young adults, older people, they have come. Lord, I pray, according to your mercy, according to your love, forgive the past in Jesus' name. Give them new life, a new start, a new faith, a new personality. A new direction of life right now in Jesus' name. If we only believe all things are possible to everyone who believes, Lord, we believe. Their sins are forgiven. Their past forgiven. Their lives set free. Yokes broken. New life begun. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. All workers. Quickly join to attend to those who have just given their life to Christ. Give them decision slip to fill. And as you fill the decision slip, please, we want you to hand them back over to the ushers. And uh, we'll be of more spiritual benefit and help to you. We want to uh, take this time to announce that we're having Jesus Friends Lunch Hour here tomorrow. All who have just given their lives to Christ tonight. By 2 p.m. tomorrow, please make sure you are at my left-hand side here if you are one of the, in the children class. And for those who are in the youth, those who are youth and in the youth class on the right-hand side here. But we, before then, there's going to be the morning session of the program, which is 7 o'clock. Tomorrow is full day, a day of full blessing. We are starting at 7 a.m. Make sure you're here and get seated at the usual place. Left hand side here for the children 
on the right hand side here for all our youths and we will have the lunch hour that is jesus friends lunch hour all who have just given their life to christ by 2 p.m between 2 and 3. then the program runs on in the evening we we'll continue with the youth program children program and later in the evening by 5 p.m all our fathers and mothers all adults are expected to join in the evening session and by god's grace sunday morning by 7 30 we start with the uh, pre service prayers 7 30 in the morning please be here it's a family combined sunday service and it's for everybody children youth adults make sure you come and don't come alone invite your friends and neighbors and all people around let them join us to be partakers of the blessing if you are yet to be attended to by the counselors please indicate counselors let's be very fast if you have not been attended to by the counselors raise up your hand you give your life to christ and you have not been given a slip to fill. please raise up your hand so the counselors can identify you and give you the decision slip Quickly, quickly, fill in the forms. It's not time to go yet. Fill the form, fill the slip, hand it over back to the... There's a package for you you need to collect. A special package for you. You should collect from the counselors. And for the lunch hour session tomorrow, we are going to be having lunch together with all the fellow newcomers, new converts at 2 p.m. in our video section. Collect your own package before you go. Collect your own package if you have just given your life to Christ and hand over the sleep to the counselors. Remember tomorrow, 7 a.m., we start the program tomorrow morning. 7 a.m. tomorrow. Be here punctually. And we run on, launch our fellowship, and then in the evening, we round up together with the crusade with all the adults as well. Then in early morning on Sunday, 7.30, we have family combined Sunday service. Don't miss any of this session. Be a partaker of the full blessing of God. And God is going to load you with his blessings in Jesus' name. All workers in various section, we want you
um, the ones all are, all are men in the house, if you're a man in the house, no matter your age, um, you can be willing to rise up. I know you have one or two things to say to our mothers. They've been wonderful. God has gifted them to us, to you as men. So I know you have one or two things to say to them. Let all the men in the house, boys, girls, I mean boys, youth, no matter your age, let's come out as well. I'm going to start with the piece of the scripture that says that um, either find a wife, find a good thing, and obtain favor from God. It's, no, I don't need to find them because I appreciate women. You understand, right? Because anything that has to do with women, you know that anytime a woman comes to your life, then you know that favor is what is about to, op- to happen in your life. There's no amount of progress you might make in your career, or there's no amount of prosperity. But whenever a woman comes to your life, maybe as a, in form of a mother or in the form of a wife, you should know that what blessings abound. So I want to appreciate all the women here, and then I want to appreciate all the women in my life. I really love all the women, because without them, I wouldn't have been woman, I'm who I am today. Thank you all. I love you. I didn't plan to take the floor this morning, but uh, since I have the opportunity, I would like to thank all the mothers in the house and appreciate what we are doing in your household. The women, the mothers are impactful. They impact the kids, they impact as well their husband. And if a husband is successful, is because he has a wonderful woman, a wonderful wow. wife, a wonderful mother. Please put your hand together for yourself. Our God is a wonderful God of purpose. And as you can see in all the creations of God, he gave us two essential organs the heart and the lungs. The heart is so delicate, it does a lot of amazing job in the body, but if you touch it, it could develop something we call arrhythmia. And that, within a short period of time, that put the heart can stop working. It's so delicate, even though it's very strong. The lung is just like balloon. If you puncture it, that's it. Uh, I know we've seen the lungs of animals, but pretty much the lungs of human in real life is different from that. It's just like a balloon. The point is this. Both of these organs, they are housed in the chest, and they are covered by ribs. When God wanted to create a woman, he did not bring something from the bone in the leg, not one of the bones of the hand. But then he chose one of the ribs because he knows that Women are super important. They form a protection around the family. Without the woman, just essential things, uh, they're not just going to be the way it should be. Um, I know it's only in movies that we see superheroes, but the superheroes, they are sitting down over there. And to all the wonderful women in the house, we want to say thank you for all the great things we do in our families. Happy Mother's Day to all our wonderful wives in the house. Um, a great philosopher once said, 
man's life without a wife is nasty, brutish, and poor. And that is so true. Because in all our lives, everybody knows, all the men will agree with me. I mean, our wives have been, I mean, whether financially, health-wise, we are just disorganized. You know, we, they always pick behind us. And at this point, I want to digress. I also want to thank the Lord that I belong to a religion wherein women are not objectified. You know, because my religion, um, they can't even consider the women to be equals. Because even times of prayers, the women stay behind. I mean, what's the point? I mean, women are the essential part of our lives. They make us great. And without them, we can't really exist, to be honest with you. Um, they play so, so, they, their role in our lives are so important. I mean, I'm talking from a personal experience. Like, when my wife leaves, says he visits Africa, I'm completely disorganized. I don't know what to do. I make calls like six or seven times. Oh, why do you put it there? Say, well, you should have learned when you have it. So I just want to take this moment and thank all the wives in the house and may the Lord continue to guide you and help us straighten our lives. Thank you. Amen. Uh, I Praise. call my mom, mommy, so thank you, mommy. That's it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This one goes to our special mothers and wives and our, our sisters. Well, there is one thing that uh, our mothers cannot really understand because from the depth of my heart, I remember when I was growing up, my mom was there at every given moment. And even when I grew up and get married, I still realized that the same thing and the same way my mom was taking care of me is the same way my wife is taking care of me. Mm. So it's like I've been a child all the days of my life. I just can't understand. <laughs> so we are so grateful to you, to all of you. We thank you for all the great things you, you have been doing for us. Even in the morning, before some of us wake up from bed, you have already prepared our breakfast and all that. So we are so grateful and so thankful. I believe the God that has been with you will keep on being with you. There is one thing, there is a special strength that the women have that I myself am always dumbfounded. Because when I go to work, coming back with my wife with two, with two kids in the house, she has been with them throughout the day, and I still, when I'm back from work, she still struggles to make sure I eat before going to bed. And she even makes sure I go to bed before her. So I wonder where you guys draw your strength from. As the Lord who have been keeping you guys and make us to take care of us, your husbands and your kids, I believe God will keep on blessing you. I'm Amen. so grateful and so thankful to all of you. Amen. Thank you, God. God bless you. Who is next? Who is next? Oh, yeah, brother, look at it. Who are you? What is what? Do you have to make your I just want to thank God for all the women in the house and especially my wife. Thank you. <laughs> Especially your, what about mommy? Mommy was there before your wife. Thank God for mommy. I, I want to also thank you. Thank my mom for all she, she has done for me. Thank you. Thank you, friend. <laughs> Happy Women's Day and Happy Mother's Day. Approximately, we have about 70 women here. And I just want to thank you for being a mother to us, a wife. And I pray that God continues to bless you all and help you all to keep our home safe in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Philip. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to appreciate our mothers and uh, our upcoming mothers. Uh, I've got three words for you. Number one, 
Our mothers are pillars. They hold our homes. Our mothers are mentors. They mold our homes and families. Number three, our mothers are sweeteners. They sweeten our hearts and our homes. May God help you to continue to sweeten our homes in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I don't know how to start and appreciate our mothers. When we talk about honey and sugar, which one is sweeter? <laughs> you are sweeter than honey. <laughs> you see, some of our young brothers, you see their stomach so flat. But you, our mother, you fed us so much that uh, our stomach is, oh, is coming out. So we really appreciate you, and the sweetness that Lord has given unto you will never go sour in Jesus' name. You have brought sweetness to our lives and to the world. By the grace of God in heaven, you'll be sweeter than honey in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Happy Mother's Day. You know, mothers are very special creatures from God. Not only my biological mother, but also I know several mother figures who God has used to uplift me during like times of depression. And it's the way that God can use a woman that God cannot use a man. A woman has a soft voice that can penetrate the soul. So I just want to say happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Um, the Bible said that uh, Lucky is the man that finds a good wife. We thank God for that. Women, women are the pillars in the house. Women do what women cannot do. You guys don't rest. Let's go back from where we came from. When a man is no longer there, who raises the children? May God bless you guys. May God bless you guys. You can sacrifice a lot to see that we are okay. You can sacrifice a lot to see that we have food in the house. You can sacrifice a lot to see that the family is okay. I pray that God continue to bless you guys in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. God bless the women in the house in the name of Jesus. Amen. The women are the completion of men. Without women, a man is not complete. Praise the Lord. The women are the ones that keep the household. They are the ones that, you know, take care of us. Without them, there is no household. There is no um, increase. There is no family without women. God bless you. We appreciate you. The goodness that God has placed in your heart for men, may it continue to endure forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you have enjoyed the service of the mothers today? I so much enjoy it. Amen. Uh, the brother just reminded me something. One time we went to the hospital and the doctor looked at me and said, out of two of you, who's got, who should I start with? I said, what is inside here? He said, bah. but she has something particular. And he said, okay. So what I have seen that the Lord takes something particular from my side. Amen? And makes something for me in life. So the bone that came out from my, from my side is a particular bone that lead me to today. And if you miss that bone, don't go into marriage. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, been, oh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. We all say thank you to them. Thank you. Thank you. You know, somebody once said that if anybody asks you where do you come from, 
The first default response should be for my mother. <laughs> when God, I will take you back to the book of Genesis chapter 1. God created man. On which day? On which day? The sixth day. And after that, he gave us mothers. The word mother is a six-letter word. So all women here, yeah, we came from you. <laughs> All right, so my prayer, we just want to appreciate you. We want to celebrate the grace of God in you. And we pray that our mutual prayer is that God will decorate you with more honor in Jesus' name. I will go with the six letters of mother. More mercy for you in Jesus' name. Oh, more opportunity for you to serve the Lord in Jesus' name. T, more tenacity to finish strong in Jesus' name. H, more holiness and humor in Jesus' name. E, more grace to be an example and a role model in Jesus' name. And let a how may you be rapturable. Praise the Lord. I want to remind myself of where I came from. I have a mother. And if not for my mother... I don't think I would have been anywhere as a child. I was playful. I was, I'm from a very typical village. And we are very rich. I said we are very. So it was my mother that helped. I didn't mean that. I, I'm not saying that my father was not doing anything. But my mother would not let me rest. If I, the, I was sent to secondary school, if I come back because I need some stuff, it's my mother that will get up, whether it's night or day, and look for a way to send me back. And so I would, I would have, if I'm telling you that this woman was up and doing to make sure and every one of, not just me, every of our, ju our children were something. And by God's grace, in his mercies, he's helping us. And so I appreciate, I, when I sit down sometimes, I said, where would I have been if my mother was not so involved in my life? And so I see God walking through mothers to help children and today, as we were coming to church, my daughter said, you are supposed to be the one feeding us, uh, getting food for us and doing this. I said, no, it's your mother. Even when you were a baby, she breastfed you. And she asked me, what is breastfeeding? And I so, and she said, oh, is it that thing wiggling on her? You understand? I said, yes. She fed you, and she's the one to be taking care of every one of us. And so I see God's, uh, walk, God walking in mothers and helping them so much. The strength that they have, to even back, back home, the strength that they have to do, do anything, prepare food, go to farm, do everything to help to keep the family. Is so wonderful. And I see that going on even in America. In our wives, the mothers are the mothers. And so I appreciate God for God giving us mothers and making you mother. And God will bless you abundantly. The children, they really know. In fact, they see you as the only one that is caring. They don't see us. They don't know that we are helping anywhere. And so I appreciate what God is doing. Sometimes it looks like uh, we are not appreciative, but we know what we are thinking in our heart. Uh, I said, may God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. He's, he's doing his confession. He says sometimes you are not appreciative. He's not been saying it well. So from today, it will change in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, well, everybody has seen 
what should be said. But for me, just looking at me, you know, as my mother has you know, worked hard, you know, I'm kind of grateful to her. And the fact that Pastor called me, understand, back there and said, man, come up. That's like the result of my father, mother's hard work. Also, my father helped, but you know, yeah, I'm grateful. Praise the Lord. Um, so I just want to, I firstly, I count myself privileged to be able to experience the love of a mother and also of a wife recently. Um, it's been fantastic. It's been, um, it's been, it's been wonderful. Um, little, um, so when, of course, when God created Adam, he was busy all around the place. And um, when God looked at him, and God had pity on him and said, okay, I'm going to make an help meet for this guy. So he doesn't just jump around the place. Of course, when um, our mothers come into our lives, they put order. Um, they make sure everything is arranged. Um, the quality of life is increased. Um, also, you would see the way they are able to sacrifice just at the flip of a finger. They sacrifice their careers. They sacrifice everything. Um, Whatever is at home, they make sure they manage it. And um, at this point, we want to appreciate them. We love them. We celebrate them with pride and elegance. How many of you can testify to the fact that a woman is working in the life of this man? We knew the way he came from Canada. Sister Yanu, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, home mothers here. Yeah. I know when that uh, Bible say in Proverbs 18:22 that uh, you are a favor. Uh, either a pilot or I have found the favor of God. Uh, I really appreciate God. Most especially when I, you know, look back uh, and see what God, what my mother has faced in raising me up to this uh, point and giving, letting me have the opportunity to, to be in America. Uh, uh, I liken it to. So when I grew up, just uh, when I got invited to my wife, and, and I discovered so many things that, oh, this is how our mother had to face all of this in taking care of our ch uh, the children. Uh, when we just had a baby, uh, sometimes uh, both of us have to, as a doctor, when we just had a new baby, uh, I really want to go to work. Uh, each time I, I, I return from work, and, and I look at my wife, uh, she has been there facing all with a sleepless night and try to join her. And before you know it, me, I'll sleep up. And I'll wake up later in the night and say, oh, you are still there, sorry. I'll do the little I'll do, and I'll still leave her. And funny enough, uh, I see that, and she kept on like that, moving up to the point that, oh, when she too eventually returned to work, the same thing, the same thing still play out. She still had to wake up in the middle of the night, and both of us still have to go to work the same time, the same morning. And sometimes even she wants to get Hell to walk, uh, leave the house before me. And I see that, oh, this is a great thing. No wonder the Bible said, you are a favor. The, we have, the, God has given you, you to us. Uh, God has blessed us, blessed you through. God has blessed you to be a, a favor to us. And I pray that this favor will continue to grow and grow and grow. And we will continue to appreciate you more in Jesus' name. But sometimes you have to wake up to help her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Honestly, it's really a privilege to stand before all of you this morning and just to say thank you to all our mothers and our upcoming mothers. Thank you, our mothers, for being a role model to us, the younger folks. Thank you, the upcoming mothers, for how you've really been striving to be the woman our God wants you to be. Especially, I want to give a big shout out to my mom. She's not here, but she's been very instrumental, very encouraging. A sincere backbone to me all along my life. I'm still young, but... I know my, I wouldn't be where I am today without the help that my mom has definitely given me. So happy Mother's Day, everyone. Thank you all so much. Thank you for being the glue that holds society together. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Our wonderful mom is in the house. We appreciate you. I thank God for your lives, how you brighten everywhere. Thank God my wife. I've learned a lot from you from day to day. You know, every time it's a wonderful thing to have you around, the counseling. You know, I, in fact, in every situation you see the role of a mother. And I thank you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Our big mommies, happy Mother's Day to you. 
Our young mommies, we appreciate you. Uh, small mommies, thank God for all of you. <laughs> Amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. On behalf of all the men, I want to say very, very big thank you to you. You have been a major part of our life. I'm telling you, I used to tell people, many a times I don't know where my socks is. I don't even know how my clothes got to the dry cleaner. I don't know where, how anything happened. But God has given us wonderful women. God has given us wonderful mothers. Like our brother said, we are children all the days of our life. We are confessing that. We might just be doing shakara that we are the man of the house. If you are not there, the food is not there. If you are not there, the clothes is not uh, cleaned. But I just want to say a very big thank you on this special day to all our mothers, all our mothers, irrespective of the age, irrespective of the status. We want to say a very big thank you. And the brothers will say what? Praise the Lord. Thank you all. God bless you. Ah, Brother David, you were hiding. Let's give our fathers, our men, a big round of applause. I know it's Mother's Day, but our men has been amazing too. They have been amazing. God bless you, fathers. God bless you, mothers, uh, men and brothers in the house. Thank you so much. So, praise the Lord. It is time for our children to come up to present um, a song and a poem to our mothers. Um, the children in the house, can you come on? Let's give them a round of applause. Let's encourage them until they get here.
Praise the Lord. We bless the Lord for this day. Today is Mother's Day. Our children are here to present a song, very simple song for our mothers and um, also a few poems for our mothers. Happy listening. So the topic of this poem is called Blessed Mothers. Blessed are the mothers who love God, for their children shall not be ignorant of their creator and his plans concerning them. Blessed are the mothers who love the word of God, for their children shall know the way, the truth, and the life. Blessed are the mothers who love the house of God, for their children shall enter their future with them in the presence of God. Present are the mothers who have the, who love to pray, for their children shall feel the power of prayer, and many shall feel salvation. May, blessed are the mothers who love to give to the cause of Christ, for their children shall become supporters of the kingdom of God. Blessed are the mothers who love the family altar, for they shall have the reward in this world and in the world to come. Blessed are the mothers who love to speak kind words to their neighbor's children, for thereby they shall win other boys and girls besides their own Jesus Christ. Blessed are the mothers who love to be companions to their children, for they shall be called understanding mothers. Blessed are the mothers who love to fight battles bravely with a strong and steadfast faith in God, for their children shall know where to find strength in time of need. Blessed are the mothers who know when they are old and great, they can look back upon memory wall, memory's wall with no regret and can say, I brought up my children in fear of the Lord. Theirs are the mansions in glory.
that he will bless your day, and that you will find in quietness when to him you come to pray. I pray you know how much you meant to me through all these years, for you have been there on your knees, sometimes with loving tears. God has seen your mother's heart and answered your heart's plea. And mom, because of your strong faith, I also now believe. Happy Mother's Day. Christ's tenderness is reflected through the softness of her touch. Few words can truly express how much we value you. You're an inspiration to us, Mom, in what you say and do. As our thoughts turn towards you, we thank the Lord above, for he created you to be a vessel of his love. Is no, uh, the title of this poem is A Mother's Love. There is no love like a mother's, her heart filled with care. With Christ as her example, her savior love she'll share. A mother's love is endless, not changing for all time. When needed by her children, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers. God bless them, everyone, for all their tears and heartaches and all their special and special work they've done. When days on earth are over, a mother's love, love light lives on. Through many generations, God's blessings won each one. Be thankful for our mothers who love with higher love. From, from power God has given and strength from up above. A prayer is for Mother today. Lord, we remember the mothers who have gone before us. For their love, sacrifice, struggle, and joy, we thank you. Lord, we remember the mothers of scripture who are a part of our story. As we remember, as we are a part of your story. For their courage, faith, love, and fierceness, we thank you. Lord, we remember those who have not given birth to us, but are mothers to us. For their gift of themselves that they have given, we thank you. For the women who struggle with fertility, for those women whose society labels as less in their childlessness, for those women who have lost their children, for their tears, for their strength, for their wisdom, for their lives, we thank you.
children or thank God for you children God bless you God bless you and God continue to bless our mothers as they take care of us thank you at this time we'll be having um, the choir the adult choir sing to us
Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. It is time to listen to God's word. And on, on that note, we'll be inviting our beloved sister, Sister Ore Shijuade. You're welcome. Let's um, give the Lord a round of applause in our life. Praise the living Jesus. We are grateful to be here in the presence of God on this um, Mother's Day day that has been set aside for us to celebrate our mothers. Our mothers in the house, praise the Lord. Our sisters in the house, praise the Lord. Our daddies in the house, praise the Lord. We are grateful for this day. Let's sing this song together. We are grateful, oh Lord. We are grateful, oh Lord. We can rise up on our feet as we just go to God in prayer. We are grateful, oh Lord, for all you have done for us. Hallelujah. We are grateful, oh Lord. We are grateful, Savior. Oh Lord, we are grateful, Redeemer. Oh Lord, hallelujah for all you have done. For us, hallelujah, we are grateful, oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you. No one else can do this by himself but you, Lord. You've made us mothers, you've made us women, you've made us your children, oh God. And we can come boldly to the throne of mercy to obtain grace and favor. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for our mothers in the house. Thank you for our biological mothers, our spiritual mothers, our mother figures, helping us and shaping us into the way of God. Father, we want to give you all the praise, honor, and adoration in Jesus' name. You've taught us your word from the beginning, but this day, I know this time, you have something else you want to, you know, impart into our lives, oh God. Father, not the person speaking, but you, Lord. Speak to us by yourself, Lord, in Jesus' name. I'm not fit, oh God, to have been called to minister to your people. We are all here to learn at your feet, oh Lord. We pray you will teach us yourself in Jesus' name. And the favor that comes from above, you give unto each and every one of us, oh God. And you make our lives beautiful. That at the end of the day, when we go to meet our reward, to be a wonderful one in Jesus' name. Teach us, Lord, we are listening. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's have our seat in the presence of God. I want to thank the name of the Lord for this day. God has given each and every one of us the opportunity to celebrate this day, to celebrate our mothers um, at this time. But I want to thank God because God himself that has created us and made us women, he has something great that he wants us to accomplish in this life. He has something great that he has deposited in us that he wants us to make an impact. And that is why God wants to talk to us today. I pray that the grace to live out our life up to his expectation, God will give unto us in Jesus' name. I pray that God will open our eyes to the places where we need to you know, just step up our game to make impact, godly impact in this world. God will open our eyes to it in Jesus' name. Today we are talking about the, the positive impact of a godly character. The positive impact of a godly character. We open our Bible to First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. First 
Peter chapter 2, verse 9. We're all going to read it together. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. We'll read it together at the count of two. One, two, go. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God wants us to show forth his praise. He has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And God wants us to show forth his praise and to have a positive impact in our lifetime. We live in a period when godly character, righteous living, moral virtues are rare to come by. This time and age, fruit is falling to the ground. Righteousness doesn't exist anymore. It exists on around us. Unfortunately, these vices are appreciated, but virtues are underappreciated. Everybody goes for the things that are reigning, though may not be godly, but those vices are appreciated. Virtue is unappreciated. Isaiah 59 verse 14 says, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off, for truth is falling in the street, and equity cannot enter. He says, this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. In Matthew 7, verse 13 to 14, it says, enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few there be that find it. This is just to um, emphasize the point that vices appreciated, but virtue, it's only few people, few that find the virtue. But we as godly mothers, godly sisters, godly brethren, God wants us to make a positive impact in our life, in, in our generation, through our lives, through the things that we do. God wants us to have a beautiful life, that by the time our life here is over, we're able to get, to make impact and we're able to meet the deeds that we have done. And that is why God wants to just challenge each and every one of us. Me speaking and we listening. God wants us to make a positive impact through our godly character. Even though evil is rampant and violent, and godliness may be sometimes few, but godliness can make a positive impact in the life of one or two people that it comes in contact with. As we are all here today, when we go back to our homes, our jobs, we'll see that it's just few righteous people that are standing, just few righteous people that are there in the community. But even if there are few, we can still make impact. You can still make impact. I can still make impact. I want us to say, I will make impact. And that a positive one in Jesus' name. We can still make impact. Despite how there the situation may be, there is hope. I want you to say, there is hope. There is hope. And I am that beacon of hope. I am that beacon of hope. I am that light. I will shine. The light that God has given to me. The light that God has given to me. I will not hide it under the bushel. I will set it on the hilltop for the light to shine and darkness to flee. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter five, let's open that, um, our Bibles to that place. Matthew chapter five, verse 13 to 16. Matthew chapter five, verse 13 to 16. It says, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its table, where which shall it be sorted? It is enforced good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Our light will shine. The light of Christ in us will shine, and 
all men will glorify our Father which is in heaven in Jesus name our Bible reading today was taken from Proverbs 31 we saw the great impact that a godly woman can have on our family on our friends on those who are far and near those who interact with her one way or the other those who come in contact with you how do they see your life how do they see my life is our light our life shining to them are we making positive impacts in their lives God will help us to make those positive impact in Jesus name three points quickly number one corrupting influence of the godless corrupting influence of the godless Proverbs chapter 14 verse 34 Proverbs chapter 14 verse 34 it says righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people that's just the sum of it sin is a reproach when there's godlessness it is a reproach anywhere you find godlessness it will surely be a reproach we have seen some women in the past even in our contemporary times that had bad influences in their generation they had bad influences in the world around them and people even the world they are yet to recover from such influence we see Eve in the Garden of Eden she caused the fall of man and it was not that she wanted to do it it was the devil who did it anytime you see sin you see people going against the will of God it says the devil has done this it's only the devil that can cause godlessness in the lives of people Eve was there because of her disobedience to God she caused man to fall and the world is yet to recover from it we see Potiphar's wife she twisted her husband's hand to unlawfully confine Joseph Potiphar's wife she twisted she, you know women we are very we're very wise let me put it that way and we know how to play those games very well that was what Potiphar was doing she you know twisted the husband's hand the husband didn't know anything per se but Joseph was unlawfully confined and that was because of the immoral character that she had in her we see Atalaya in the book of 2nd Chronicles chapter 22 she cancelled her son Azariah he was one of the kings you know in Jerusalem at that time she cancelled the son that he should do evil and he did it with all his heart he did that evil with all his heart and even after he died she rose up and said now it's my turn and she killed all the seed royal and said she was going to reign and she started reigning as a queen at that time that's Ataliah. she cancelled her son wrongly Jezebel she killed God's prophet she harassed the prophet of God Elijah because of her hatred and pride she killed the prophets of God contemporary women in this time and age they do things that are unfathomable when you look at because women are very we're very strong at it and we can do and undo they provoke people to do things that are wrong and they are very bold about it they dress immodestly they act immorally they encourage children to use profanity they watch sexually explicit explicit TV shows they gossip they treat children in a cruel and neglectful manner they fail to provide good home and atmosphere the feminism um, term is rising and very very rampant some, some do it for a good cause but sometimes it's been taken to the extreme that women don't want to be controlled anymore they neglect the spiritual training of themselves and that of their children they abort unwanted babies and they are those people that are standing tooth and nail like true everything for abortion of babies they claim that they have right over their body and they never ac acknowledge the fact that God is the one that made them a woman and they should do the right thing but they are very courageous about it they kill babies they change the agenda sometimes they say they don't want to be a man a, a woman again they want to be a, a man now and they do it unapologetically they are not apologetic about it they do it with all order with all courage some operate in witchcraft and high-class wickedness we see that rampant in our society that is the evil that we are in and we as godly women we have to contend against all these forces sometimes you want to stand up for what is right but you see people 
who will pull you down that you cannot stand up for what is right. That is the corrupting influence that we see in our society today. And sometimes we're helpless and we're like, where do we turn to? What do we do? But in the midst of it, in the midst of the darkness, the light will shine in Jesus' name. All these people that I've listed, like Ataliah, she canceled the son to the evil, she killed, destroyed the seed royal. But there was a woman during that at home time that said, no, you cannot destroy everybody. She took one of the sons of, of um, Azariah and hid him. She did something good at that time. It looked like every, the darkness was prevailing, but she said no. She, was, she had foresight and said, I'm going to do something. And she took the son of Azariah, Azariah and hid him for a moment of time. And when the time was fully come, he was made king. And the woman, Ataliah, was destroyed. She was killed. She even wanted to contend that also. But a woman, and her name is Jehoshabet. She did something notable at that time. Very silently, she did it. But she knew that this thing is important. She needs to, to destroy and, 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 and uh, nip the, the root of evil that is coming up. During the time of Jezebel, she was killing God's prophet. But someone rose up. This was time it was a man, Obadiah. He hid 100 prophets. So no matter how dire the situation is, we can still shine as light. We can still do the right and make positive impacts in our generation. God will help us that we will make positive impacts in our generation in Jesus' name. Go back again to that passage, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. I want us to read that one more time. That I just keep coming back to that passage. We're all reading together one more time. One to go. But ye, you say I in that place. When you say ye, you put your name there or yourself. One to go. But I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that I should show forth the praise of him who had called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. We will show forth that praise in Jesus' name. We will shine that light in Jesus' name. I go to point two, characteristics of godly women. Despite the fact that we have bad, evil, godless women, we have godly women who stood up for what was right, stood up for the right things, stood up for things that are good, and they made impact in their generation. Godliness can only come from a devotion to God and a life pleasing to God. Remember, godlessness was because of the devil. It says the devil has done this, caused godlessness. But God can bring about godliness. There has to be a change made by the Lord Jesus Christ. There has to be an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ before we can operate in that godly character. If we think that we can do it by ourselves, we cannot. Paul said, the things that I want to do, I do not. The things that I don't want to do, those are the things that I do. But it's only God that can deliver us from this burden of sin. So that encounter with God has to come first to live that life of godliness. We look at some women in the Bible. I know we all know it's, it's just um, to just refresh our memories about this thing. And also take salient points and let God open our eyes onto things that we can do. You know, these women, they were... You know, women just like us, but God singled them out. Or they singled themselves out, let me put it that way. You know, acting on the good things that they know how to do. And it's made impact. They didn't do it because they wanted to show that, no. They just, you know, came about. Those opportunities just presented themselves to, to this woman. And they took hold of the opportunity and made godly impact. We see Esther. Esther, she was a very prayerful woman. She had a relationship with God. She was sensitive to the Holy Spirit. She was sensitive to the counsel, godly counsel around her. Her uncle told her, you have to say, you have to rise up and save this generation. And she did not hold back. She, she did not, I don't think the uncle told her to fast. No, the uncle told her, you have to rise up and do something. And I'm sure she depended on God and just said, declare three days fasting. And that was done. She saved the whole nation, you know, from perishing because of our prayerful lifestyle. What is that thing that God has deposited in you? Use it for the glory of God. She saved a whole nation. Ruth, Ruth was loyal. 
she was loyal. That's just, uh, you know, our own natural tendency. She was very loyal. And she let that loyalty speak for her. She let that loyalty to make great impact. And at the end of the day, she became one of the great, 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 great grandmother in the lineage of Christ. She never knew when she was doing it that she was going to, you know, be in the lineage of Christ. But that loyalty that she had, she used it well, and she used it for the glory of God. Hannah was someone else that was prayerful, and she was meek. She had the spirit of meekness, and the meekness, you know, made way for her and made her to have impact. She was meek. Because when she was praying, the, the servant of God came and accused her that she was doing something which she wasn't doing, but she just, you know, answered in a meek way. I pray God will help us. And if me, myself, talking that God will help us to always be meek. She was meek. And when the, the servant of God saw that, he blessed her because of her meekness. And with that, she gave birth to Samuel, the first prophet in Israel. She used those, these things, you know, they, 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 they used those, the things that God had given to them to make impact in their generation. God rewarded them greatly. And Samuel was the first prophet in Israel and he led the people of God righteously. Deborah, she was a woman of courage and strength. She had courage and strength. That's her own natural tendency and ability, or God gave it to her. Let me put it that way. But she used that courage and strength to lead the army of God, to destroy the enemy, Sisera, Deborah. She showed courage and strength. Elizabeth, she was a woman of faith and service to God. She had needs, but despite those needs, she said, no, I'm going to serve God. She served God, and God visited her. God visited Elizabeth. And what, what was her impact? She gave birth to John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. So you never know the good thing that God has planted into you. Don't let it stay idle. Use it for the glory of God, because one day the reward will come in Jesus' name. One day the reward will come in Jesus' name. That takes me, just reminds me of Proverbs chapter, chapter 31. Let's open our Bibles to that place. If I can remember where that scripture is. It says, for she shall rejoice in time to come. I'm looking for that um, verse that says, for she shall rejoice in time, in time to come. That's what that verse says. Whatever you're doing, just continue doing it. You will rejoice in time to come when you see the impact that your life will make in this generation. In Jesus' name, Mary, she was willing. She had a willing mind, a willing heart to do the, the, the bidding of God. And God said, you are highly favored. You will give back to the Lord Jesus Christ and the greatest impact of all. She gave back to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because she had just that willing mind, the willing mind to do the will of God. She said, be it unto me, Lord, according to your word. And she gave birth to Jesus Christ. We see Dockers. She had kindness in her. She radiated the love of God and the peace of God. She gave to the needy, people around her. She gave to them. And God showed up for her. Lydia, she was a businesswoman. She was high class in the society. But she was a godly woman 